welcome to the rink live uh, podcast uh we are sponsored by nchc.tv and we thank them for their sponsorship uh actually i just uh, rewatched the uh, St. Cloud State, North Dakota game from from Saturday because I was coaching youth hockey on on Saturday, so I, I finally got a chance to kind of rewatch that. So that's one of the great uh, parts about NCHC.TV. Totally switching over uh, in, in short order here. I, I'm very happy uh, to be joined by by Natalie Darwitz, uh, the University of Minnesota assistant uh, head coach for the women's team, and Natalie. Uh, we were talking a little bit before we got started here, uh, a huge weekend for you guys against uh, Wisconsin. Just uh, describe, I guess, uh, w- w- what all you saw this past weekend. Yeah, a terrific weekend for us. Obviously, we are coming in um, as, as the top five top five team in the country, and, and they're number one. And um, we knew it was going to be a challenge, but I just tremendously love how we played and how hard we played and uh, how tenacious we were. And uh, we just kind of raised our standard this weekend and, and showed – our caliber of play and uh, certainly Wisconsin is a good team and the next time we see them we're sure (laughs) revenge is on the table for them but for us certainly a a great weekend for us to to try to go into next weekend against UMD and and wrap up the first half of the year on a high note. Yeah you know when when you're playing with you know this particular Wisconsin team uh, you know what are things I guess that you always have to be cognizant of and and what, what did you guys execute so well I guess against them this past weekend? Yeah, obviously, you know, Mark Johnson's the coach over there and, and he has done a tremendous job and is an iconic coach on, in so many, so many ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're, they're just certainly a well-coached team. They play a kind of a methodical game. Um, and for us, it was really important to, to really just go at them hard, uh, put bodies on them, make them turn over the puck. Um, so it was really what we did away from the puck that, that really helped us, whether that was um, good angling or just tenacious forecheck. Um, we were able to turn pucks over quickly and then transition quick and capitalize. And um, our forwards are just rolling on all cylinders right now. Um, Taylor Heisey, in my opinion, is one of the is the best player right now in college college hockey, and and she's certainly making her presence felt on every shift out there. And then we have a great supporting cast of uh, a- Abigail Boreen and, and Katie Skaya and Emily Odin and a good back end, and we got some solid goaltending on a Lauren bench. So really, we played all three facets of the game were really strong this weekend. And, and that's why we came out with some success. Uh, you know, a, a bit of a slow start to the season, uh, you know, for this team, uh, what are some things where you look and as a coach, uh, you know, this is what you're, you're shooting for. You always want to keep making steps. You always want to keep improving as the season's gone on. When you look at uh, this team from the start of the season to where you're at now, what, what are areas where you think, you know, you guys have improved or shown the most improvement maybe at this point? It was funny. We were actually just commenting on that over the weekend. Um, <laughs> we don't know that team back in, in started in October. We don't even know who that team, that team is gone, um, which is, which is great for us. We've, we bettered ourselves. Um, but to look back and I think the first, the first two weekends we had Ohio state and Duluth. Um, so a tough start. Um, but it's, if, if we were to play those weekends right now, um, and thankfully we play one next weekend against Duluth again, we're a completely different team. We play completely different. Um, we're, we're tenacious on the puck. We're, we're shooting the puck when we need to, and we're going to the net hard. Um, and now we're getting good defense, and, and they're moving the puck really well and getting pucks through and, and defending well. So we're just playing a really solid team game where we come at you in waves. And, and one of the things that I think stood out is – um, you know, a former Wisconsin player who I ran into this weekend just was like, you guys are fast mm-hmm. and we're not, we're, we have the same personnel as when we started. It's just the demeanor of how we're playing the game as we're just playing fast and hard. And, um, there's a grit to our game and a grind to our game and just a, a blue colorness to our game. And I think maybe was missing in the past that the girls have realized, Hey, if we don't have the puck, what do I have to do to get it back? Um, and then we can go and transition and play some fun hockey. So I think that's the difference is just our mentality, um, of our personnel really hasn't changed. Unfortunately, we've had an injury or two that that's that happens in a season, but it's just been our mindset has, has been a total switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, let's, uh, let's turn back a little bit, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, the opportunity now to, to return to the university of Minnesota for you that came here in the, in the off season. Uh, obviously Joel Johnson 
uh, moved on to the University of St. Thomas and he's coaching the, the women's national team. There's a full plate for you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how, describe, I guess, uh, you know, how, how you ended up, you, you were at Hamlin, uh, obviously, for be, before that. Uh, what, what, uh, what, what ended up, how this process kind of end up where you ended up coming back to the U here for you? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty crazy story, and and everything was was really dictated by things out of my control. I, I wasn't looking for this job, mm. um, but as you mentioned, I mean, I think a lot happened with with Joel Johnson, and then the domino effect um, really happened after that. So it started with St. Thomas changing head coaching, making it making an opening, right? And mm. then Joel got that job, and and Bethany went with him, and. And that created two openings at the University of Minnesota. Um, I, I loved Hamlin. I loved uh, Trier Rink and, and, and being partnering with the Minnesota Wild. And uh, we had certainly had a good program over the last six years and, and turned that, Jake and I turned that program around and um, we're a national contender. So I had no intention of, of looking and, and going to the U, but Brad, Brad called late in the summer and, and uh, we talked through this position and um, you know, lucky enough, Jake was able to come with me, who was my assistant at Hamlin. And, um, you know, the, the rest is kind of history. So I love being at the U. I love coaching this caliber of, of athlete. Um, they crave to get better. They want your coaching. They want to be pushed. They want to be their best. Um, and so it's just super fun to coach this level of, of athlete. Uh, you know, for people who don't know, uh, you actually spent uh, two previous seasons uh, w w with the program as an assistant coach, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. Uh, so this isn't your first time being behind the bench with the Gophers. But uh, th th this might be kind of a weird question, but, you know, thinking back, you know, 10 years, you know, when, when you're, you know, back with the, with the program to, to now, I mean, there's been a lot of, it feels like there's been just a, an ocean of change, I guess, in terms of hockey and, and women's hockey and stuff. What, what are some changes, I guess, that, that you've seen or noticed, I guess, as, as you return to the U here this year? I think just like the overall caliber of the game has gotten greater. Um, hmm. I think players can shoot faster, skate faster, they're hmm. smarter. Um, you know, back when probably 10 years ago, it was, it was more like a two line, two line team. And that's, hmm other top teams are the same. Um, and you were lucky if you had a good third line and, uh, you know, six D you could play. Whereas now that's the norm. It's you, you have three solid lines and six solid D. And sometimes, uh, especially for our team too, you know, our, our, we don't, we don't really have a, a starter in net. I mean, we may now with Lauren playing a good weekend last weekend, but, um, you know, teams usually have two top goalies as well. So the whole overall depth of the game is just, gotten so much greater than what it was in 10 years ago. So I think that's a huge step in, in the right direction. Not only that, I think if you look at somebody like Chrissy Wendell, like her career ended when she was, I think like 25, mm -hmm. the, the longevity now just of the resources and, and maybe, you know, women's hockey players getting paid a little bit more. Um, the players on the national team are in their high twenties. So now there's a, you can have a career playing hockey. So there's not like it ends after college, which was the case 10 years ago. It's like, you can go on and play for the white caps and try to play another Olympics and you can have a career out of it until you're like 30. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's, it's, it, we're still taking baby steps. I'm, I'm still, um, I'm, I'm still want to see the growth happen a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the growth that, socially and, and, in, and, and in a media spotlight that needs to happen is people taking account of that. Mm -hmm. Last week at Wisconsin, their rink was near capacity. Mm -hmm. You know, we have good crowds at Ritter. We'll probably have a good crowd this weekend, mm -hmm. uh, but still yet our games are nowhere to be found on TV mm -hmm. or live. They're live stream, but you got to pay, you know, 15 bucks. It's, it's where you, right, you can watch a hockey game on live stream with good announcers for free, you know? Mm -hmm. So we need to make that stuff accessible um and have a platform for that so i appreciate you know people like you and jess that have me on or other females on or women's hockey coaches on that promote the game because that's certainly important yeah uh you know th this is the interesting thing well to me well i, I i've been looking forward to talking with you natalie just because honest to goodness i mean it, it, if there's a more 
storied hockey player in the state. I, I don't know if there's one more than than you. And so I, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gushing a little bit, but I, 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 I've been looking forward to talking with you. Um, but, you know, when you look at, uh, you know, the, the national team and, and, and with playing, you played in three Olympics, uh, you're, you, you know, you're still in your thirties, you know, I mean, there, there are players that, you know, you look at the NHL and stuff, uh, uh, there are players that play obviously into their, in their late thirties, Alex Ovechkin, I think 36 years old or whatever. What, what ended up being the deciding factor for you, I guess, to walk away from the game, you were still, you were the captain of the, of the national team and at the 2010, uh, Olympics, uh, so, I mean, you, you had a good Olympic games there as well. Uh, you won the, won the silver medal. What, what was the determining factor, I guess, for you to, to okay, I, I'm done playing now. Yeah. I, I always joke um, with people like Zach and Zach Parisi and I grew up like we're the same age and we played on a couple of like the super series teams and, and I always joked, I'm like, he's making 98 million and I'm waking up at 6 a.m. doing private lessons to make some money. Yeah. You know, so it, it really, uh, you know, I, I just, I'm a person who I, I'm, I'm appreciative of, for me, hockey's opened up so many doors. I've met so many people. I've got to see so many places I probably wouldn't have seen without playing hockey. And then you want to kind of compare yourself to a guy and go, wait a minute here. <laughs> yeah. um, that's not fair. But yeah. at the, the end of the day, the real, the real story was I ended my career at 26 mm-hmm. and I was getting paid at best from the national team, $25,000 to play hockey. Mm-hmm. And then on my own, I was having to make ends meet. Um, and as a 26 year old, you can't survive on that kind of paycheck, right? You mm-hmm. got to make a living. So for me, um, it was a, it wasn't, it was a decision of, of what do I do? Do I continue on for four more years scraping by without the resources really? Cause the other thing people don't realize there, there aren't resources. You're kind of on your own in those non-Olympic years to train, to, you know, go to the weight room, super lucky that, you know, again, we had people that backed us like Jordan Leopold, let us work out with him and his, at his facility with Jack Vladewick didn't, didn't, pay it didn't have us pay a dime so grateful for people like that who recognize what we were trying to do and bust our rump um and we weren't getting paid for it meanwhile they're pulling up in their Audis and you know right so um so I'm I'm grateful for people that recognize that that lend us a hand um so for me it was you know do I continue on for four more years and and or do I get into coaching and and possibly start a family and, and move on with life and and for me, that's kind of what I, what I chose to do. Um, would I love to be playing hockey right now? Absolutely. It's just, mm-hmm. it just wasn't in the cards financially and resourcefully. And, um, and you know, the thing that creeps in is, do you want to have a family? And that's why Chrissy, you know, ended her career at 25 as well is because she wanted to have a family. And, and I was kind of going along that path as well. Yeah. How, how tough was it though for you? I mean, I, I obviously I mean you, you've loved the game for, you know, probably as long as you can remember. I mean, for somebody who played with as much passion as you did, I mean, how, how difficult a decision was that? Oh, super difficult. I mean, there's, there's still times where I'm like, should I have continued to play or not? I mean, that that stuff crosses your mind. What it should have, could have. But uh, at the end of the day, like I'm super happy in life right now and got two, two little boys. And, and, and for me, to stay involved in the game, whether that's camps and clinics and lessons and, and coaching the Gophers now, it's, it's my way to stay involved and keep those competitive juices flowing. But don't get me wrong, this weekend when you're playing Wisconsin and it's a, a packed barn and it's a close game, I, I certainly want to lay some up and, and do that again. Uh, Mick Hatton from the Rink Live, and I'm speaking with uh, Natalie Darwitz here on the Rink Live podcast. We appreciate her, her taking some time here. Uh, you know, so you end up uh, walking walking away from the game. You, you uh, basically you, you left the national team. You, that was your the most recent time that you kind of came back to the to the University of Minnesota. But w- was that something that you were interested in right away? Was was coaching? Uh, you know, did that could could you feel the draw to that to just stay involved in the game, or was that how, what went into that uh, decision process for you, Natalie? 
Yeah, I actually, you know, sometimes your parents know you best. And um, <laughs> I didn't get into coaching because I wanted to. My dad kind of twisted my arm. He was the head coach of the Egan, the girls varsity team. And um, he just said, hey, you know, come once a week, twice a week. And I was like, absolutely not. I, I won't like it. And he just said, no, you're going to come. And, you know, at that time I was, I think like just out of college and, and stuff. And he was um, obviously still relied upon my parents in certain facets, whether that was insurance or whatever. And so I was like, oh, I felt like I had to. Um, so I, I, I went once a week, twice a week, and then it turned into four times a week every single day that they were playing and I was there and I just absolutely fell in love with it. Um, and at this time I was still playing, I was still playing the national team and I found that it actually helped out my game. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I, that's, that was about the time where I kind of shifted into being a captain of the team. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I would have gotten into that spot um, if I didn't start coaching. I think I'm very introverted by nature, I'm very action oriented. Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, I would just, me leading would be going out and doing that. Well, now through coaching, I develop obviously more personal skills and communication skills and leadership skills that I brought back to the national team and kind of got out of my shell. And that's where a lot of my peers and teammates were like, you know, wow. And Natalie's really grown. And, and that's why I was voted captain of those teams, to be honest with you, is because I started coaching. Um, so from there, I, I went to the U for a couple of years and, and uh, um, I left the U just because I was really just gr tired of the grind of traveling. Um, yeah. I've been traveling with the national team since I was 15 or, you know, college years and stuff like that. I was just kind of like, Oof, I don't want to be on a bus or at a hotel anymore. <laughs> so I went and coached high school hockey for four years at Lakeville South, um, which was a lot of fun. To, that was my first head coaching experience. And then from there I was at Hamlin at six and mm. uh, just turn, you know, turn that program around from bottom feeder to national contender and, and now I'm at the U. So that's kind of the, the, the pathway I, I've gotten to right now. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned your dad, uh, your dad was, uh, uh, coach at, at Egan, uh, where, you know, how, how young did you start playing hockey? Uh, you know, what, what got you involved in hockey? You know, was, you know, we're, obviously with your dad being a, a coach and stuff, uh, you're around the game a lot, but just describe, I guess, what you remember of starting out playing hockey. Yeah, so I'm lucky enough to be the youngest of three. Um, and, you know, back in that day, the, the gender thing to do was like tap dance and ballet and <laughs> that stuff. And well, needless to say, like, that's what my sister did. And then my brother was the hockey, played hockey, my dad coached him. And so naturally being the youngest, it was, Natalie, do you want to go with mom and sister to tap dance or dad and brother to hockey? And I was like, hopped in my dad's car in 2.5 seconds. Um, <laughs> And so I just kind of grew up as a little rink rat and um, just stayed pretty persistent on my parents of like, when do I get to play? Ryan gets to play hockey. I want to play hockey. When do I get to play? And, and my, my mom finally caved and she's like, fine, when you turn five years old, we'll sign you up. Um, she did that thinking that I would forget about it. Um, <laughs> and on my fifth birthday in October, I woke up and, and ran downstairs and said, I get to play hockey. And, and obviously she was a little bit, nervous because there was no no other little girls playing right um and so you know she let me I, i'm really grateful looking back that that that's scary to do i mean she let me follow my dreams and passion and what i wanted to do and and i'm really grateful that she allowed me to do that and, and gave me that pathway to do so so the rest is history from there i uh five years old hopped on the ice and and never looked back it was something i always when I woke up in the morning, it was the first thing on my mind. And when I went to bed, it was the last thing on my mind was, was the game of hockey. Uh, now, uh, the, the girls high school hockey actually, correct me if I'm wrong, and, and, and pardon me if I'm getting the timeline wrong, but it, basically it was getting started right when you were in high school. Am I right there? Or? Yeah, it was, um, it was a few years in. Um, so, you know, the Broat sisters and the curtains, mm -hmm. they were the ones kind of the spearhead. Uh, yep all of that and and they're a little bit older than me and um so i'm not sh exactly sure when i came in but there was there was a, a few state tournaments already had okay uh, but i was i came in as a seventh grader and and played until my sophomore year of high school and then i didn't play my junior and senior years because i was with the the national team um 
So that was kind of my route and absolutely love the high school hockey atmosphere is just obviously a bias, but there's nothing like high school hockey going yeah. to a game and, and having the students and the parents and then grandparents in the stands. And there's nothing quite like a section section tournament. And then obviously getting to the state tournament is what you dream of as a little kid to do. So. Yeah. What uh, now you, you kind of touched on this a couple of times, but you, you joined the national team and, and this is just, mind-blowing to me but you joined the national team the national senior women's team at age 15 what was that experience like i'm trying to, i have a 13 year old son i'm trying to imagine him in two years being on a na national senior team uh what, what was that like was it intimidating you know what were the what was it like kind of joining because obviously most of the, everybody else was was older than you i mean what, what was that like Again, just kind of looking back uh, at my path, like, again, super fortunate that I was the youngest of three siblings because I, I had to grow up fast with them. And then, you know, they they show me the ropes. So um, the other thing is, is I, I was around high schoolers as a seventh grader. So that helped me, too. But mm. the big jump was I'm a 15 year old being in the locker room with a 30 year old or something like that. Yeah. So uh, I was I started out the national team as number 22 and number 21 was was the Cami Granado. Um, so I sat next to her in the locker room and, and everything. And it was just like, obviously I was a little bit starstruck and they just won the gold medal in 98. Um, mm -hmm. And I joined the team that, that next year. So obviously the, the players in that locker room were just coming off of, of obviously making history and, and cer certainly in the locker room, I just kind of stayed quiet, um, kept to myself. And, but again, I was lucky that, uh, majority of the majority of the team were Minnesotans. You know, I had Chrissy on the team with me when he, when he broke, Alana Blahovsky was out there. Um, so I did have, you know, my, my, my inner circle to, to help me out and to watch over me, but on the ice was my, was my thing. And, mm -hmm. and so once I got on the ice, I didn't care who I was with. I just did my thing and played the game of hockey. Um, and that's where I felt comfortable. And so once we were on the ice, I kind of, uh, hopefully prove prove to the team that I meant that I was meant to be there and, and belonged on the team and, and could contribute and the rest is kind of history. What, what was, uh, you know, uh, obviously uh, with going to three Olympics, each, each Olympic, uh, you know, experience is, is unique in its own way, but that first one, uh, I, I would think that that, that one ha has to probably be the one that well, it'd be the one I would think about the most just because everything's so new and you don't know what to expect and, and, and that sort of thing. For you, what was what, what do you remember, I guess, about that first Olympic experience? Yeah, you're a smart guy. I mean, that was my favorite one and <laughs> my most memorable one for sure. Uh, I was 18 years old. It was in our backyard in Salt Lake. Um, a lot of family and friends were able to come um, and then add on my buddies are in high school watching me on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, it was certainly awesome. Um, you know, and I think the only disappointing thing about that is I was actually just doing another podcast and, and they asked me, should the Olympics be a seven game series with Canada? And I was like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> that would be awesome. Cause that, that season we were leading up to the Olympics, I believe we were eight, no against Canada. Mm and we lost the wrong game. We lost the gold medal game and we just, you know, probably played a pretty average game that game, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And if it was a seven game series, I think, I think it hopefully would have been a different story, but um, can't make excuses. Um, but yeah, certainly a lot of uh, just cool things, just, you know, being 18 years old, being away from home for two years uh, to see my family in the stands and, and some close friends that just like, not only did I sacrifice, they sacrificed too. I mean, mm -hmm. they, as parents, your, your little girl left home for two years and was around people twice her age, possibly, and in, in a mm -hmm. really stressful and competitive setting. Um, so I think it was just as special for them too. Um, and then I just remember we had our first practice and uh, there were rings on the ice and to skate over those things just gave you chills. I remember Katie King, who coaches at Boston College right now, just was like, pretty cool, huh? And I was like, yeah, I think that was a moment it just kind of hit you. 
Um, and just a lot of other cool things. The NHL, the NHLers were in the Olympics at that time. So I met Mike Madonna. You know, he, he was my role model growing up and I always watched him with the North Stars. Um, so to meet him and talk to him in the village and I met Wayne Gretzky after a game and mm. just a lot of cool memories from the Salt Lake Olympics. Yeah. Uh, you know, what was it like just, uh, you know, did you walk through the, the opening ceremony where you at the opening and closing ceremonies or, or not? Yeah, we were. Yeah. yeah. What I would imagine that, I don't know, is that something that sticks with you too? I mean, I, 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 I can't even imagine what, what that has to feel like being, you know, with, because not only do you have obviously your teammates and everybody else around, but you've got the entire <laughs> country's Olympic team, you know, with you walking in. I, 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 what, what's that experience like? I think that's the aha moment that like you're there. Yeah. Um, and you know, the other thing to take into account, we we're on the heels of nine 11, uh, yeah. the year prior. So not only that, but security was just heightened and you saw mm. snipers everywhere and choppers overhead and, Hmm. Um, and then to have, you know, the flag brought in from, from the World Trade Center and then the 1980 team light the cauldron. Um, but just to walk into that stadium with your USA uh, garb on and, and all the other athletes, it's just that moment that gives you butterflies and goosebumps and go, holy cow, like I'm here. And, yeah. and all my work paid off and my teammates work paid off. And then the other cool thing is like, you're sharing that with, you know, 20, 25 other members of your team. And we're just so lucky to be in a team sport because there you walk around in some other sports, it's just two or three people. Right. Um, and to share that with a, with a group of 25 of ish. Um, that's just super cool feeling. Yeah. Uh, I want to shift a, a little bit again. Uh, your, your time at Hamlin, uh, you know, Hamlin, <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I don't know that there was a lot of people that knew that Hamlin had a women's hockey team before you got there. And, you know, you end up going to, to two frozen fours. You made it to a national championship game uh, a couple of seasons ago. Uh, what made you decide to, to get into the college? You had been a successful high school coach. I mean, was it always kind of your, your goal, I guess, to coach in you know, be a head coach in college or how, how did that come about that you ended up at Hamlin? Yeah, I, I think like so many things in life, it wasn't planned. It just, it mm -hmm. kind of, I think when you're ready, the opportunities find you. And again, I wasn't looking to leave Lakeville South and I was, I enjoyed the high school hockey, you know, scene and schedule and then everything like that. Um, but the athletic director just simply reached out to me and, and gave me a call. And at first he was like, hey, I wanted to know if I could get some contacts of some people that would be interested would you meet with me and have lunch and I was like sure you know I'd love to grow the game and and that lunch right away wasn't about other contacts it was about if, <laughs> if I was interested and I was kind of just like no I'm not interested like I don't want to do the the reason I got out of college hockey was the time commitment mm -hmm. um you know I was pregnant at the time with with my first son and I was like I'm not going back to the being on a bus and hotels and he's like whoa 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 d3 let me tell you about the schedule yeah. and kayak and and you're, you're never going to spend a night in a hotel basically yeah and the more he, he talked i was like okay you know and and uh it kind of spoke to me and um you know the other challenge was um you know um hamlin like you said i don't think people knew even they had women's hockey yeah. right <laughs> Uh, so I was like, oh, okay. Like I, I'd really be taking a challenge on my hands. They played at Oscar Johnson at the time, mm -hmm. which no disrespect to Oscar Johnson, but it is like, there's frost on the glass. Yeah. Um, hold on a second. Zach, hold on, buddy. I got to talk. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, and uh, I know that arena, it's in, on, off Energy Park Drive. Yeah. I used to work down yeah. by there. And so- yeah. You don't even really realize that there's an arena there, honestly, unless you're really looking for because it. Because it's in like a business district and yes. stuff. Yeah. So um, our locker room was a construction trailer. Um, so, you know, the good news is, is when I was at the time getting hired, I knew that there was an arena in the works with the Minnesota Wild. Mm. I just, we just didn't know how fast tree or rink would come to fruition. Mm. Um, but I knew we were going to be doing a deal with them and, and hopefully make that the home of Hamlin hockey. 
Um, so the first year and a half, we were in Oscar Johnson and the first year just we inherited the team we had and and it was really cool because as we were talking offline with our coach and our kids at a young age you see so much improvement and we saw so much improvement out of that group I think we won like nine games that year which the previous year I think they won three mm. so that was a huge step up uh, we were competing with teams we were giving them games instead of them you know running up the score and playing their backup mm. goalie on Hamlin year two came and we brought in, I think, 15 recruits and just kind of overhauled the program. Year three, we won a Mayak championship uh, and went to the Frozen Four for the first time ever mm -hmm. um, in, in school history, obviously. So the following year, backed that up with with uh, getting runners up in the national championship game, lost to Plattsburgh. But um, that was a fun year because us and St. Thomas were going back and forth. And in the, in the semifinals, we beat them, uh, St. Thomas, and they hosted the frozen four. So, um, just to take that program to, to nobody knew about mm -hmm. Hamlin and they had women's hockey to, you mentioned Hamlin university and people would say, Oh, they have a good women's hockey program. I think that was the coolest thing to see that transform transformation, um, from people to that Hamlin hockey was on the map. So it was a super fun time. And then to be in a true rink with the Minnesota wild, that just, to go to that facility every day was so much fun to, to be there. And the rink staff is amazing and um, certainly miss that place right now. Yeah. Uh, you, you've, you've also coached uh, in, in the state girls hockey tournament. Uh, you, you've coached in the, in the national you know, tournament. You've been an assistant coach at, at the division one level. We, obviously all the, all the great uh, things that you, you've done a, a, as a player, what, what's the, how does it feel? How does it feel different, I guess, as a coach going and, you know, doing something like that versus as a player? I mean, the, the, it's got to be an entire, well, I, I'm imagining it's an entirely different thing, but from your standpoint, I guess, what, what are some of the things that are different and maybe even better, I guess, about, about it as a coach? Yeah, I think as a coach, you're just, you're just so invested. I mean, not to say you're not as a player, but it's just a, it's a completely different ball of wax. Um, <laughs> as a player, it's like, you're so action oriented. I'm going to work out. I'm going to shoot pucks. I'm going to go on the ice and get better. And then you're like, re recover. Yeah. Whereas it really, the brain never shuts off as a coach. It's always, yes. always thinking the game, always thinking of ways to make your players better or to, to develop relationships with your players to make them better. And, um, so it, it's definitely more challenging as a coach because you really, you, your control is Monday through Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got to let them be Friday and Saturday at their games and go, okay, did I coach well enough Monday through Thursday to, to make an impact on that, those, on our players and what we wanted to do so that they could execute it in the game. Mm. Um, so it's just a completely different feeling. Uh, mm. I would say, you know, um, you know, when we coached at Hamlin and we won uh, a Mayak championship and went to the Frozen Four for the first time, that was probably my most fun season ever in hockey. It just to, to take a team that wasn't supposed to be successful and, and to, to get them better and to coach them up and, and to do what we did, it was just, it was really gratifying. And it felt like just so many people were a part of it and and it really was special. So I do think there's just so many special memories you can create with coaching and, um, and it's just a different feeling than as a player. Well, uh, just, uh, again, thanks, thanks so much, uh, for, for, for joining me here on, on the podcast, Natalie, it's a really, uh, a, a treat to talk with you. I, I feel like I could, I'd love to sit here and talk with you for two hours and just talk hockey because uh, just so much fun to talk about all your different experiences and all the different levels that you, you've been at. Uh, and so it's just been a real treat for me. I just want to thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me. And like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's great that you guys um, do great things for women's hockey and want to grow the game. So really appreciative of that. All right. Uh, this is Mick Hatton from the, from the Rink Live. Uh, this has been the Rink Live podcast for another week. Uh, we are sponsored by nchc.tv. Thanks so much for joining us and check out all of our content here on, the, on our website.